Hello, this is my first video on the English language. My native language is Portuguese, I'm Brazilian. My name is Alexandre Porto. So my channel in Portuguese is about philosophy and especially about libertarianism. I talk about metaphysics, epistemology, ethics, philosophy of mind, philosophy of language, and also economics. I follow the Austrian school of economics. And by the way, I follow the praxeological and economic ideas of Ludwig von Mises. I follow some of the ethic ideas of Rothbard and Hans Emmer Hopper. I follow a lot of Kant's epistemology, and I greatly admire John Searle by his contributions to the philosophy of mind and language. I am an anarcho-capitalist. I I am an anarchist. I believe that the right law is the law of property rights. I believe that taxation is theft. I believe that the state is a property violator by its own nature. And therefore, the state would be, in my view, criminal. And therefore, anarchy is the correct way. My channel in the beginning was about politics. I talked about what I thought was good or bad in politics. But then I became anarcho-capitalist and then it all made sense philosophically. I could actually, for the first time, philosophically talk about ethics, philosophically talk about economics, although you don't need to follow Austrian economics to be an anarcho-capitalist. But Austrian economics, and most especially the praxeology of Ludwig von Mises, made economics actually make sense for me logically. So, for the first time, I started to logically understand ethics and economics, and I united all of that with the rest of my interest in philosophy. So, I have in my head some kind of philosophical system where all areas are interconnected, and some areas depend on other areas. For example, uh, we may say that economics depends on praxeology, and praxeology depends, in some ways, on the philosophy of mind and language. So when I first came in the libertarian movement, there was a kind of fight between natural rightists and utilitarians. And I'm sure this fight still exists in the English language, but in Brazil, in the Brazilian libertarian movement, this fight actually is over, it ended. The natural rights side kind of won the battle, because we really fought, we really debated a lot on groups, on Facebook groups, and on YouTube channels like mine, for example, I was a defender of natural rights. And you know, the utilitarian arguments are kind of weak. For many reasons, for example, you cannot actually calculate the results of every action. Another reason why utilitarian ethics is weak is because utility does not equal morality. You can think about many cases where the utility is optimal, but the actions result in extremely bizarre and immoral results. In other words, the ends don't justify the means. And yet another reason is because utilitarian ethics does not deal properly with conflict. Uh, two actions which are both optimal in utility may still come in conflict with each other, and the law must necessarily deal with conflict, otherwise it will not be able to solve conflicts, will not be able to tell which action is allowed, which action is prohibited, if actions come into conflict with each other. And so utilitarianism fails in those aspects, and for this reason utilitarianism has kind of died in the Brazilian libertarian movement. Some years ago there were some people defending it, but it kind of died. And then the discussion came to the natural rights movement where there are many different kinds of views about natural rights. For example, some libertarians are religious and they believe that natural rights come from God or from religion or from faith. That you may know natural rights only by revelation and faith. And some other natural rightist libertarians believe that you may come to the knowledge of natural rights only by reason. Some people call this religious view theological natural rights and other people call this rational view rational natural rights. These are not the only two views about natural rights. There's also anthropological natural rights. Even when you talk about rational natural rights, people still disagree with one another about that. Some libertarians have some kind of synthetic argument for natural rights or for rational rights, which is the argument of the act of justifying your action. 
um, like Hans Hammerhopper, they say that uh, by the act of trying to justify any action, you are agreeing to some necessary norms which are necessary to any argumentation, and so you may not contradict your theory by your own action of conforming to the norms of argumentation. I'm not going to get into much detail on that, but some other kind of people who defend rational natural rights, or you may call it just rational rights, they say that by an analytical kind of argument, which is different from the synthetic, you may deduce by the meaning of the words themselves what law is coherent, what law is correct. And so these are two different kind of arguments for rational rights. Some people defend one of them, some people defend another, and some people think that you may agree with both. But one problem arises when you agree with both, is the problem of ought, or the problem of duty. Because some libertarians believe that the law is the only duty. That the only duty that you have, in the sense of the Kantian categorical imperative, the sense of ought, the only thing that you ought to do is to follow the law, is to not violate property. And other libertarians think that there is some morality separate from the law. Some libertarians separate morality from legality. They believe that some things may be legal and yet they may be immoral. And this is a problem when you equal the law with duty and ought. Because then if you believe in some other kind of morality, there can be two oughts and they may come in conflict with each other and philosophically this is a problem. So yeah, there's a whole discussion about that. I see that the English-speaking libertarian movement has lots of cancer in it, like social justice, classical liberalism, people who believe that taxation is justifiable, people who believe that the state must exist, that it must have some kind of monopoly over the use of force, over the use of weapons. So the English-speaking movement is very, very different from the Brazilian libertarian movement. Because in the Brazilian movement, most people respect the idea of rational natural rights and respect rational arguments. We actually have philosophical discussions. I don't know about economics in the English-speaking libertarian movement, but in the Brazilian movement, most libertarians follow the Austrian school. And so this first video is meant to be, of course, some kind of test, because I've never done this in English before, but also I expect to start to interact with the libertarian movement, see what people think, and start to make my videos attacking the ideas that I disagree with, and defending the ideas that I agree with, because that's what I like to do, I have a passion for debates, for arguments. Please let me know what kind of video you want me to make in the future, in the comments. Tell me what are your ideas, what you believe in, in minarchism, utilitarianism, natural rights, whatever. Why do you believe in them? I'll probably make videos answering your comments. Thanks for watching, see you later.